Hi, everyone. Sorry for the delay. I was doing another session in another track. So uh, in this session, so we are going to uh, go through uh, what WC2 Cloud provides and uh, what types of uh, platform as a solutions WC2 provides. So I'll talk about three things, mainly the WC2 Cloud, WC2 Managed Cloud, and the platform as a service solutions. So uh, what is WC2 Cloud? So it's a publicly hosted uh, offering, which uh, WC2 provides for deploying uh, integration, uh, apps, APIs, device, identity, and analytics. So currently, API Cloud and App Cloud is available for public. And we are working on the integration cloud, which will be available in alpha stage in a few weeks' time. And in the future, you can expect the other three clouds to be available. So in public cloud, uh, we provide uh, application hosting. So it supports Java web applications, MS4J-based microservices, PHP, and Jaggery. So Jaggery is a Java, JavaScript, server-side JavaScript engine, which WC2 implements. So uh, you can use those to implement your application. So it provides uh, an attractive UI for doing managing the deployment and monitoring it, and also supports versioning. So if you want to manage multiple versions and then do product updates, that's also supported. So finally, it provides uh, log aggregation. And all of these features run on top of Kubernetes. So we have a publicly uh, running Kubernetes cluster for hosting this platform on AWS. So what is API Cloud? So this is uh, on high level WC2 API Manager as a service. So in addition to the API Manager, it provides a management UI for you to manage your team, the organization, the grant permissions to different users, and how to do uh, uh, WC2 front, how to do metering, and uh, do billing. So it provides an API store. So which is actually the API manager uh, component. And uh, features like uh, uh, security management, throttling, documentation, and uh, many different features that API manager provides. So in addition, it also provides analytics. So you can, uh, uh, the advantage of using this solution is that you don't need to run your own API manager in your infrastructure, rather, you can use WC2 hosted API manager to manage an API management solution. So why we would need an API manager? So if you want your organization to expose APIs and then talk, to let other partners and third party users to integrate with your system, and you can expose APIs. But rather, to focus on your management aspects of the API, so API management solution provides features for doing uh, managing security, managing uh, API throttling and how to do uh, uh, documentation, provide API discovery, and so forth. Then the integration cloud. So uh, this would provide ESB as a service, but specifically on doing cloud-to-cloud -cloud integrations. So it provides an UI for you to uh, do the deployment. So the integration can be designed on using WC2 Developer Studio. And that can be exported into car files, carbon artifact files, and then deployed in the integration cloud. So this solution will be available in another few weeks' time. Then what is managed cloud? So if an organization needs to uh, build a solution using WC2 products, that can be managed by WC2 for you. So we will do the deployment on AWS on selected regions. And WC2 engineers will do the installation and the maintenance. And we'll uh, do all the upgrades and maintenance and guarantee the SLAs given. So if needed, it can be integrated with your on-premise uh, infrastructure and also run in a VPN. So WC2 earlier implemented a platform as a service solution called Stratus and later moved into uh, supporting other platforms. So as a result, so we now can run WC2 products on any of these platforms. 
and we ship artifacts required for deploying on them. So I'll go through one by one. So these are the problems we solved on each platform. So how to do configuration management, how to create virtual machine images or container images, then how to make the deployment automated, and how carbon cluster can be automatically discovered on each platform, and how load balancing can be done, and how to apply updates. So start with Kubernetes. So uh, Kubernetes started uh, with the experience Google had over 10 years. So Google was running containers at scale for more than 10 years using two different systems called Borg and Omega. So they were specifically designed to run on Google infrastructure. So then they wanted to implement a generic purpose container cluster manager that would support Docker and other industry well-known technologies. So Kubernetes runs as a collection of masters and slaves. So master provides the basic uh, API and other components, and containers would run in nodes. So here they use a concept called pod. A pod is a collection of containers. And then uh, it uses Linux namespaces features for sharing file system, uh, user namespace among uh, this set of containers inside a given pod. And load balancing is done by services. So using this model, we implemented a reference architecture for deploying WS2 products uh, on Kubernetes. So this is the first architecture for deploying a worker manager separated product on Kubernetes. So for manager, we'd have a separate cluster, and the workers will have another cluster. Pods will be managed by replication controllers, and the load balancing will be done by the services. Then if you were to deploy a complex application such as uh, API Manager, which has seven subclusters, we use the same approach and create replication controllers and services. So we have already released these artifacts. If you go to github.com slash wc2 and search for Kubernetes, you will find this repository. So Kubernetes provides uh, UIs to do manage the deployment and monitor that. And this is the solution stack for Kubernetes. So for building Docker images, uh, we provide Docker files. And uh, to make that process efficient, to manage the configurations much more efficiently rather than duplicating configuration files, we use Puppet. And, uh, and these are the artifacts which we use for cluster discovery and services and so on. So then uh, OpenShift. So OpenShift is basically uh, Kubernetes plus few other components. So around 90% it's Kubernetes. So using the same set of Kubernetes artifacts, we can deploy WC products on OpenShift. In addition, if you want application lifecycle management features, build processes, deployments, then those features can be get from the OpenShift platform. So it also provides a nice set of UIs. So even Kubernetes does not provide this much of UIs for Kubernetes. So Open Red Hat actually contributes to the Kubernetes project, and then they release this separately. So this is same as the Kubernetes uh, solution stack. Next would be Apache Mesos. So Mesos is a similar cluster manager, similar to Kubernetes, but this started way back in 2009 at University of Berkeley. So they started this uh, way before where even Docker started. So it started with Linux standard containers, LXEs and then move to support Docker uh, later on. So Mesos has a, a separate distribution called DCOS, which is known as Data Center Operating System. So this is the architecture. So it has the Apache Mesos as the core at the bottom. And then it has abstracted out the pass component. So the pass is called as Marathon. So then it also provides a separate component called Kronos for running batch jobs. And DCOS provides the UI, CLI, and package repository. So this is driven by a company called Mesosphere. So this is a, a set of sample screenshots from DCOS. So it provides a nice set of uh, UIs where it uh, can illustrate the current uh, resource usage of the data center and the uh, applications deployed on the pass, and different services available in the package repository, and so forth. So 
now WC2 product can also be run on DCOS. So for this, we provide set of marathon applications and a membership scheme. So uh, similar to Kubernetes, what we do is like each marathon application manages its own cluster. And here, load balancing is done by marathon load balancer. So compared to Kubernetes, this does not have a service concept. Rather, containers expose ports using host ports. There's no service concept. So therefore, we need to use marathon load balancer for load balancing purposes. So currently, this is under development. Still, we have not released this. But uh, you can look at the uh, latest artifacts in these repositories. Next, Cloud Foundry. So uh, Cloud Foundry also a platform as a service solution, which uses a different container runtime called Warden. So I may not go into detail of the architecture. So I'll tell you how uh, we can deploy a middleware server on Cloud Foundry. So to do that, we have to use a concept called build pack. So uh, the build pack automates the deployment process. In Kubernetes, OpenShift, and Mesos, we actually create the container images for the platform. But in Cloud Foundry, we don't deal with the container creation, container image creation. Rather, we provide the artifacts. Cloud Foundry creates a container image for us. So that process happens using a build pack. And it also has an abstraction called stem cell, which provides the OS level abstraction. So if we want to change the OS, we need to use a different stem cell. By saying all of that, so after doing a research, we found that there are several limitations at the moment in the current Cloud Foundry implementation. So it can only expose one port from a container to the external world. It terminates SSL at the router. And it does not provide a way to configure internal routing, internal load balancing between internal components. So still, we can deploy uh, WC2 products on that with these limitations, which where we don't need multiple transport to be exposed to the outside. For an example, uh, if you're using API Manager and ESB, so we can live with one single transport. And there's a problem with the, trans uh, the protocol. It only supports HTTP at the moment. So it doesn't support TCP. So these things are being fixed in their next architecture, which is called DOGO. So it's being implemented using Go. So it's a major refactor for Cloud Foundry. So uh, we think it would take more time for them to release a GA version of the Diogo platform. So similar to other reference architectures, here also we use a CF application for each cluster. And the load balancing is done by the CF router. So this is the deployment process. What we need to do is uh, create a folder and extract the WC2 distribution to that folder, and also uh, include other prerequisites, such as the JDK and the artifacts which we need to deploy on the server. Then we can use the CF CLI, Cloud Foundry CLI, to push those artifacts. Then what happens is it triggers the build pack. We use the binary build pack here, and let us CF to trigger the WC2 server SH inside the bin folder. So then it creates a content image and creates content instances using that image. Then it would be ready to serve via the router. So it also has a nice UI. So you can do like uh, view logs, do manual scaling, and view the resource usage. And also has analytics dashboard. So you can build the uh, request counts and network usage and so forth. So uh, for this, uh, we we are currently implementing a membership scheme to auto-discover the cluster, ca the carbon clustering. And uh, we don't ship any artifacts because it's a matter of using the CF CLI to do the deployment. And uh, the configuration can be managed via Puppet. So WC2 Puppet modules provides a generic way to build Docker images or manage configurations of all of WC2 products in a generic way. So it ha uses a technology called Hira, so separating out configuration data from the Puppet module, and then uh, manage it in a hierarchical manner. So we don't need to duplicate configurations in different places. Say uh, if I'm doing a deployment using multiple WC products, and all of those uses the governance registry, then if you want to put the governance registry data source information in one place, so we don't need to put it in each module. Rather, you can put it in a single place and manage it efficiently. So it avoids uh, duplication of configuration. 
So that's all about the...